One, two, here we go. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining me. I have Anastasia Narinsky, uh, someone I've known for a long time, uh, a talented artist in many ways. I mean, I can't even really comprehend all the ways. Actress, comedian, writer. Uh, you're, and I'm not saying this because I know we used to give each other a hard time, but musical theater, do you sing? Listen, I sing. <clears throat> I sing. I sing. I don't know if yeah. people would like pay for tickets to hear me sing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I think, <laughs> like, I like to sing. But you enjoy it. I really enjoy it. But not, yeah. I like, I, was, I wish, it's like one of those things that I wish I could do is like musical mm, theater same. style, like sing, where people are like. Dude, it's so impressive. It's so impressive. It's so impressive. Like, when you really see, like, and you understand the industry, you know what they're dealing with. Yeah. Aside, like, just the acting. Yes. And then you're like, oh, yeah, by the way, carry a tune. <laughs> Don't even get me started. It, like, All nothing, right, we will. nothing makes me more emotional than, like, watching a musical theater performance. I'm like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. Well, I think it's, it's, um... I've found, especially through the years of like editing my own material and watching things, like it's so hard to sorry to say, but music is the most powerful art form on earth. Like watch a show without music. Right. Watch a TV show without music and you understand how important it is. I'm not saying the other art forms aren't crazy impactful, but music, man, it's oh. like it's in us. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get to yeah, musical yeah. theater. It's in my notes. But I wanted to start with your name um, because I found that everybody I've interviewed has had a Hollywood story about their name or like some like, for example, someone had a very Russian last name and they changed it when I was doing their IMDb research. I noticed like early on because she was trying to whitewash her name and uh, and, I, you know, which we both have been in the industry long enough to have been part of that culture early on where it's like, no, make sure casting can say it easy. Right. So I wondered if you ever entertained that or like, what was your no. thoughts on, or your experience with your name? I mean, literally never. And I didn't take my husband's last name when we got married. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Too. I love my name. I mean, obviously yeah, when awesome. I was like a fourth grader, and, like, at a new school, I wasn't, like, super psyched about my name. Um, sorry. Uh, That's all right. I, I genuinely, like, wanted to ch change my name to, like, Kiki. Because mm -hmm. I read that in, like, a book. And I was like, this is the name for me. Like, this is the name that's going to be, like, just the same as everybody else's. I'm going to blend in. <laughs> Which is, like, crazy. Yeah. Kiki's a cool name, but like, yeah. also like it also means cocaine in the gay community of West Hollywood now. So well, we love go. that. Okay, maybe I'll change it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I love my name. I I actually really like how Russian it is. Like, the whole name Anastasia Narinsky is like so Russian, and like now that I have a kid whose last name is the same as Harris's, I'm like, sh should I like legally? I mean. Under SAG, it will always be Narinsky. But I'm like, legally, mm. should I change it? Like, just so that we all have the same last name? Yeah. And, like, when Harris and I got engaged, it was one of the first things I asked. I was like, do you want me to, do you care if I change my name? And he said, I don't care. And I was like, okay, then I won't. Like, if you, if you, if it was important to you, we could have a conversation about it. Sure. But, like, if you don't want me to, then I think it's, like, kind of a pain in the ass to do anyway. Oh, my God. My buddy, during COVID, he was flying. Uh, his passport was different than his COVID ID than his like plane ticket because he had uh, he had gotten married and he had already changed his name at some point. So when he married his partner, he had three legal names floating oh out God. there. And it was a, what a nightmare! It was a mess. And yeah, yeah, no. And I love the way you said that. You know, <clears throat> where you said, um, "Harris, if you have a problem." We'll have a conversation. Yeah. It's not, Harris, you have a problem. Whatever you want. No. Or, fuck you. <laughs> you don't even get an opinion. You know, it's, I love, I, that feels super healthy. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's also, I think, probably the best quality of our relationship anyway. 
is like conversations like that but still like we'll talk about it i won't necessarily do it yeah. but we'll talk about it but if it's not important yeah. then why even <laughs> why do it i like my name <laughs> yeah yeah and i gotta ask because of all the obvious stuff going on in russia right now <sighs> you immigrated i forget were you born in russia or yeah born yeah. so born in saint petersburg in russia um I'm pretty sure it was still Leningrad then. And moved wow. to... how wild. I know. 88? I, I actually don't know if that's true. And now I feel a little bit, like, ignorant about Russian history, not knowing that piece of information. So I'm going to look that up. But, um... <laughs> And then we moved to Cleveland. I think it was pretty fluid, <laughs> pretty fluid history for them at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Um, moved to Cleveland when I was four, so in 92. And, yeah, the whole the whole family, super Russian. My first name, oh, my God, get this. Okay, speaking of names. So <laughs> my mom wanted to name me, oh, my God, wait. Ah, oh, my one of my parents wanted to name me something along the lines of like anus. It was like <laughs> anise and anise. It was like or... it was like on on not. Uh, it was anus? something like that. And my dad, and then they were like, "No, no, no, that's too crazy. Let's do something simple like Anastasia." Yeah, and then they yeah, they yeah. they settled on Anastasia. Because there was some like famous actress at the time named Anastasia. This whole my whole life, I thought I was named after a princess. No, <laughs> named after some like random actress in the eighties, which also fairly tracks. Sure. Yeah. Um, based on the trajectory of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my dad recently told me that he's like, "Yeah, we wanted to name you like Anus or something," and we decided last minute, and I was like, "Well, fucking good thing you didn't." Like. Yeah. Holy shit. Jesus. Like. Fuck. Not. I can't remember what the name was. God. Chime in any time. If I remember, if you remember the point, name. Yeah. Yeah. You just say the name. <laughs> we'll be like. Cut right <laughs> in with the name. In a anus. deep, serious conversation. It was <laughs> anus. <laughs> I would accept it. Yeah, yeah. So Russia's having some issues right now. Yeah. Do you, like, what is your relationship to the Russian people culture american russians because if as far as i understand it where you moved there was already a russian community yeah yeah in the early 90s so yeah, yeah what's your relationship we went to a jewish private school in russia or in cleveland in russia um hmm. in cleveland because like we came in as refugees and so the jewish community in cleveland like put us through school and like gave us a place to live got my parents jobs did all this like really wonderful stuff for my family. And there was a lot of Russians at that school. So there's a lot of like Russians living in that area um, around that school. And for a similar reason. I, I mean, I bet, I actually don't know, but I yeah. bet like probably for a similar mm. reason, a lot of Russian Jews. I mean, I'm sure also just like probably during a lot of people left probably during like the forties and fifties, you know, and probably came mm. to America and settled in Ohio as we all do from time to time. And sure. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, my brother and I were talking um, over the holidays with my cousin, my cousin who's Russian married a Ukrainian woman and mm. like her parents were in Ukraine when the war happened, they got them out They're here in America wow. They, like, got her cousins out. I think they might still be trying to get her other set of cousins out. I mean, it's just wild and very sad. And obviously, like, I'm in full support of Ukraine, and I think what's happening is just awful, awful for everybody, for everybody involved. Because, like, yeah. the people in the military on the Russian side don't know what's going on. I mean, maybe now they have a better idea, but probably not, too, because the news is, like, yeah. totally brainwashed and they're like they're lying it's hard to, to fathom it's hard to fathom but it's the truth right like they're they're so insular they only know what they're allowed to know unless they're lucky i mean and they have to go into the military and 
uh, over there. And especially now, they went and forced every single man between the age of 18 and 60, I think, to go and join. They like are wow. they're forcing people. So already when yeah. you turn 18, you have to join the army if you aren't going to college or something like that. Mm. Um, but now they're forcing people to do it. So these 18-year-old children are... Yeah. going to ukraine thinking like oh well ukraine wants to be liberated and then they get there and they mm-hmm. hear these people fighting back and they're like wait 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 mm-hmm. this isn't what they wanted that's weird so that's an aside but mm-hmm. over the holidays we were talking with my cousin and and i don't remember how it came up but my brother was like i feel very i'm very proud of oh you know what it was it's because we were talking about um I was saying, like, if we have another kid, we're probably going to give that kid a Russian name because I don't know if my parents will ever forgive me if I don't because my first kid's (laughs) name is Irish. And my dad... It's a great name. It's a great 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 name. name. But my dad was like, great, so he's a quarter Irish, half Russian, but (laughs) sure. (laughs) So... So, (laughs) I was like, the next one's got to be Russian. And I want it to be too, so fine. And my cousin was like, really? Like, right now you think, like, that kid isn't going to get, like, so, like, I don't know, bullied or whatever for having a Russian name? Mm. And Anton, my brother, was like, well, that's ridiculous. Like, he's like, listen, I'm very proud of being Russian. And I and I realized, like, I feel the same way. I am very proud of being Russian. I'm very proud. I love my name. I love my last name. I love where I'm from. I love them from somewhere else. I don't love their government, but, like. How many That's people right. love the government the here? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. Yeah. I, I remember I started making these videos and I'm sure we'll talk about this, mm-hmm. but like I started making these videos on social media about like my Russian mom. Yeah. And I remember I put one out like right after things started happening in Ukraine and somebody commented like something really shitty about Russians. And I just wrote back like, Hey, um, the Russian people aren't their government, just like the American people aren't their government. So, like, Russian people yeah. are still like good people. Totally. Like, that's how like, I felt. I'm not out here like saluting Putin on social media. <laughs> right. Like, I'm literally yeah. making fun of my Russian mom making soup in my kitchen. Like, yeah. relax. It's yeah. not that serious. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. It's interesting how it gets conflated. I feel the same way about Chinese people. Like, fuck, you know, they just get rolled in with their government. Of course. They're just people. Right. <laughs> trying to live. I mean, like, everywhere, fuck. everywhere. Like, yeah. anybody in the Middle East, it's like, you're just assuming because, mm. like, someone looks a certain way or has a name from a certain place or whatever, it's like, oh, well, this person must be, you know, fill in the blank, a terrorist or, like, whatever. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's like... Literally labeling every single American so as one of those Westro Baptist Church crazy people. Oh. You know, well, we kind of are. Oops. Oh, dude, that's the <laughs> dude, I've heard or read that um, Russia, like the the actual landscape, is the most warred upon uh, yeah. landscape of, on Earth and historic, like as far as we're aware. I mean, it's got to be. <clears throat> it's so big, just like. Statistically that's speaking, that's where Genghis Khan, like his epicenter, was in that area of uh, Mongolia. And... I know. I actually have this theory that I'm slightly related to Genghis Khan. Yeah. Well, you know how like there's that statistic that's like one percent of all mankind is humankind is is related to Genghis Khan as a direct descendant. You could, I could believe that. Right. I mean, and so many people yeah. in Russia. And that whole area in Mongolia, obviously, yeah. like, yeah. are. Yeah. And I, I mean, haven't done like, a 23 yeah. in me yet, but my brother did. And I think part of it came back as, like, a little bit, you know, from yeah. that side of the world. So it would just make sense. Yeah, I did one of those, too. And it's, like, very, uh, it's almost disappointing. And, uh, like, uh, it releases you in a way. Because I was like, oh, I thought it was this my whole life. <laughs> but I'm only, like three percent okay (laughs) yeah i think i'm just like straight up russian and like (laughs) which of course and like 18 percent ashkenazi jew oh i have uh i'm one percent ashkenazi oh welcome (laughs) Woo! (laughs) thank you i'll take it i'll take what i can get brother (laughs) all right (laughs) yeah so 
All right, we're talk- we talked about Russia. Yeah. Now we're in Ohio. Yeah. So walk me through your relationship to where you're from and your family and Ohio in general, because then I want to get into like how you found art. Yeah. Because I've noticed that Russians are pro- prolific artists, so I'm curious if the artistry found you in Ohio or if it was brought there with your family. That's interesting. Yeah, my relationship to Ohio is like, it's so, we moved to Bainbridge, which is where I essentially grew up from like fourth grade till I moved out to California when I was 21. And what kind of town is a big city? Small, or small. small. Town, so it's or? a township. It's so small that it's okay. not a town. It's a township. Like our mailing address isn't Bainbridge. It's the town over, which is Sugar and Falls. So like, mm. and everybody knows about Sugar and Falls because it's like, it's where Bill Waterston is from. Uh, who did is the a musician? He, no, he did the um, Calvin and Hobbes comics. Oh, whoa! So if you look at Calvin yeah. and Hobbes comics, there's most of them are in Chagrin. So there's like a little popcorn shop in the background, which is like <laughs> really well known. Wow! Because it's been around since like the 1800s, and it's beautiful. I mean, my hometown is beautiful. I love visiting. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> there is, I, I say this all the time, like, I wish I wanted to live there because it's so cheap. Mm. It's so beautiful. The public school is like an award-winning public school with like incredible classes and electives and sports and like extracurriculars. Mm. And it's so safe. But, it, but there's nothing. We had one movie theater and it closed down over the holidays. We have no movie theater. <sighs> Oh no! <laughs> like what? Oh, I mean, no. there's one not far away, like in the next town over, but still, like it's so small. Yeah. Uh, I think the sense the 2020 census. I literally just looked this up because for a long time, in the 2010 census, it said there was 3,000 people, and now there's 10,000 people in my hometown. Oh, not okay. too shabby. Yeah, we grew over three wow. times in 10 years, so. You know, things are coming up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. All right. So, but it's so there's sounds not, like you have a healthy relationship now. Yeah. Now, at the time, I just like couldn't wait to get out. Uh, there's uh, like a little uh, tiny theater in Chagrin called the Chagrin Valley Little Theater where I did my first play. And oh, I, wow. I, and when I was there, I was home for the holidays and Harris and I were like walking around in Chagrin and I walked past the theater and I was like, oh man, I wonder what they have playing right now. Like maybe we should go see a show. And and the theater is like not a bad theater. It's better than all the theaters we've ever done improv at. I mean, it's Whoa. like really nice, like big, like stadium seating, huge stage. And the shows they get are incredible. Like the oh, budget, wow. the budgets are huge. I was looking at their program for the year and it was like Kinky Boots, the musical, which is, first of all, I can't believe they're doing a musical about drag queens in this town. It is so shocking to me. Like Kinky Boots, they did like Elf the musical. They're doing like Robin Hood. Wow. They're doing this play that I want to do so bad called uh, The Play That Goes Wrong. It's like a farce and it's super physical and I want to do it so bad, so bad that I have emailed the theater and I was like, would you accept a uh, taped submission audition? And then I would just audition and then just like go stay with my parents for a month and like do this play. I love that you did that. I think it would be so fun. I mean, it's obviously unpaid, but like, who cares how much fun to do? When am I going to get an opportunity to do this show that I would love to do? So my relationship to my hometown now, I think I have a lot of love for it. It's very beautiful. It's very quiet. It's now that I have a kid, it's perfect mm. um, for him. But at the time, like, man, I just was so bored. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. I just visited uh, with my girlfriend. She's from Wisconsin, and her town... She she said it's like very similar to yours. It sounds like she's like, they don't call it a town; it's a village. And she showed me a picture of population one hundred fifty. And oh no. yeah, it's yeah yeah. And her dad lives an hour away in Iowa, so she's 
southwest Wisconsin, her dad's northeast Iowa, and we went to this little town called Decorah, and it's a, like a you know a two block one street town, and at two high end knitting shops. <laughs> And I was just like, what the hell is going on in this town where there's 10 stores but two are knitting shops? I'll tell you what, competitive and, uh, knitting circles, that's what's going on in that yeah, town. That's, that is what was happening. And they are but thrilling it, to watch, I bet. <laughs> oh, dude, it was uh, it was beautiful in the same, when you're describing it, that's exactly what it reminded me of. I was like, I could see as a kid, like, just yearning. I mean, I wanted to get out of San Diego. Right. Like, okay, so... I mean, the grass is always greener, you, especially when you're a kid, you know? Like, you don't know. You don't know, like, what it actually is. You literally don't means. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how'd you find your way to art? Like, what was the first thing? When did you... When were you like, I think I'm going to move to L.A. and, like, give this a go? Or was New York an option? You're in the middle of the country. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't remember a time in which I didn't want to be an actor. Genuinely, like, it's all I've ever wanted to do. Um, And I don't know why that is. I mean, we moved to America when I was four. My parents were 30. Uh, And so they obviously had to work a lot. They were 30 with three kids, a St. Bernard that they brought from Russia. (laughs) Who was lovely, but, like, what are you doing? Sure, sure, sure. And, like... (laughs) So they were working a lot. I mean, they've provided an incredible life for us. And so we were home, like, all the time. And, I mean, we had no money. We, like, truly were, like, pretty poor. Obviously, we didn't know that when we were kids because, like, what do we care? So I think, like, so much of that created this environment of, like, imagination. I mean, I made clothes for my Barbies, which were all from the thrift store, my Barbies, I'm sure, I made them clothes. My mom taught me how to like use a needle and thread at like seven years old, six years old. And out of like old socks, I'd make them like little dresses. I made them this like dollhouse out of this like three story bookshelf in my bedroom. And I would make their beds from like old boxes. I would tape together just like crazy, like little DIY projects. And I have, (laughs) we have like two home videos and one of them, it's all in Russian. But it's literally me and my two older brothers. And, like, I'm in the background, like, performing the ABCs very poorly and not in order. And <laughs> one of my brothers has a tennis ball and is like, this is a bomb. And he's, like, pretending he's on the news. So, like, I just think we were all so uh, forced to be creative and, like, mm. silly. And we didn't care about the silliness and like in hindsight like both of my parents are artists I mean Mm. they sort of weren't allowed to be once they came here because they had to work and put all that stuff aside but like my mom during the pandemic like took up painting and has painted the most beautiful paintings I've ever seen I'm like you made this she's like yeah yeah yeah." but like it's easy and I'm like no (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no not everyone can do this right like you yeah. know that she's like no yeah. no it's fine I'm like okay and like we'll take up any kind of art my dad is my dad loves movies he mm. loves music loves music his record collection is legendary it's insane so like I think our house was so full of music and movies and art and my mom made us do like word puzzles in the car and like uh memorize my mom oh god you know what it's like i feel like i'm in therapy right now i'm having like recovered memories yeah yeah (laughs) on the way to ballet class because my mom said like you don't have to be in anything specific she's like you have to be in an art class so we took piano i took ballet for a very long time uh art class like whatever you have to be in some sort of art class and on the way to these classes my mom forced us to memorize these lengthy, beautiful Russian poems. So we had them mm. memorized. So we were memorizing monologues at like mm. nine years old, like just for fun, just wow. to like have them. Wow. And like, and now it's like, of course, of course, this is what we're doing. Mm. It's so crazy. 
That's super interesting. And also what occurs to me is like, <clears throat> like when I think about you and your brother Anton and I've, I've met your eldest, but I don't um, know him, so I can't come. But I, I would imagine it's the same thing. You guys, because you've had good parents, what I've noticed in people who have good parents where both parents are there, they have such a good sense of themselves. Like, you've always had a s sense of yourself. I'm not saying there isn't room with things to work on or improve or whatever. There's a lot of room for but, improvement. <laughs> but, like, you, Harris, our, our buddy Eric Griffin, who you know, um, like, he, these are people I've known a long time, Anton, obviously, and there's such a good sense of self. And uh, it was just interesting yeah, that, that was really coming through. Even if it wasn't conscious to you, I'm like, as long as I've known you, you've had a sense of yourself. And uh, it's really impressive to me who's really had to work to find myself in that sense. Yeah, but even being aware of that, I think, is also pretty impressive. Like, even, like, being aware of, like, oh, I need to, like, work on something. I have stuff to work on. I need to find out more about myself or whatever. Because I don't, I think that that's also pretty rare. I don't think a lot of people have mm. the sense to do that. I think people can be mm. very um, sensitive to critique or to like hearing anything that they're not ready to hear, you know? Oh, I know for <laughs> myself. I was super sensitive, you know? And I, I felt like if I didn't get into therapy, I was like, gonna kill myself or somebody else and accidentally yeah yeah you know i just had all this stuff and then i'd be on the, my men's team and they're all fathers um and their children range from like three to 18 and i'd share stories about my childhood and they'd be mortified and i'd be like oh I guess that's not normal for dad to leave me like that or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So it was just a really fascinating experience. You know what else is really, really crazy? Helpful. I realized while talking to my friends, like, we'll just be, like, mm. having a conversation about something. I just went to Napa with some girlfriends recently. And we're all, like, wasted. And talking sure. about, <laughs> like, you know, whatever, just crazy, like, really, really personal conversations about, like, our sexuality and, like, you know, our experiences with stuff. And then I'm like going to bed just thinking, and I mentioned this to my friends the next day. I'm like, you know, it's so funny. You think to yourself, the stuff I'm feeling, the stuff I'm experiencing is only mine. I am yeah. a freak for feeling this way. I'm, cr I can't like, I am alone in this. And then you hear your friends and you're like, Oh, we're all you. You're all, yeah. you also feel, Oh, you also had that experience. Okay. So yeah. we all just need to like talk to each other and be comfortable having these conversations because then you, really recognize like oh we're all just like getting by totally we're floating on a rock truly in space <laughs> shooting through the sky <laughs> yeah yeah like an uh, unconscionable speed like over a thousand miles an hour <laughs> like you know i i got this tattoo i don't know if i've seen you've seen me but it no. says men oh yes, 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 yes and that was part of that for me because you know, I look the way I look, which, you know, is maybe when my resting face is more brutish. Oh, or... we've talked about this. We both have resting bitch face. Yeah. And so, like, I wanted to be an advocate for this type of work. And that's one of the strongest pieces of group therapy. It's not necessarily, like, the individual attention, but it's the relatability to others. Yeah. Like, you're yes. like, oh, my God, this mom of three in her 40s from Mexico, we're going through the same shit. Right. Whoa. And that's the power of group communication. Totally. I can absolutely see the benefit of something like that. Yeah. Especially when you feel like, isolated. Oh, dude, my lowest moments, I, I notice in reflection, I'm like, Oh, you lo you lone wolfed it. Yeah, yeah. You know, my business partner would tell me on a occasion he'll be like, "Sean, you're like one of the strongest people I know, if not." And I often will re repeat back to him, "Well, I'm the most supported guy, you know. I'm in individual therapy. I'm in group therapy. I have a men's team. I have a great inner circle that I can call and talk about the heaviest topics to." 
So I'm all like, I just really have been learning. Like, you know, it takes a village in many ways. It's totally. Not just like what we thought. But also give yourself credit for that too, because you didn't always have all that support. You went out and sought a lot of that. Yes, thank you, and I, I do give myself credit, um, when I can. Still learning. Yes, yes, yes. So, literally Did like still therapy? learning how that worked <laughs> yeah definitely uh lifelong for me maybe not but uh at the moment at the moment it's yeah. been really working and uh i promised her i go to therapy this year so don't worry i'll join hey, you. you know uh i have a good person if you're ever looking um happy to recommend i do not recommend her to everybody because i'm protective of that community but I would, uh, you would fucking fly with her. The reason I love her too is she grew up in entertainment. Mm. So she gives like very entertainment specific feedback at times. Oh, that's nice. Cause she's like, she's like sold shows herself. Her dad was in the industry in a big way. Um, he was an acting coach for the stars in the eighties. So for like Jack Nicholson and things he's like got stories. that. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so it was really helpful. But anyway, we're coming back. We're in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What brings you to L.A.? So I, I, I always wanted to be an actor. And I had looked up acting schools when I was in high school uh, as a, for college. And in hindsight, you know, it's like, man, I wish I had done like this, 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 or this. But here we are. I looked up all these acting schools and I found the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is where I did end up going. And Juilliard. Ada? Ada, yeah. I think they prefer to be called the Academy, but I just for some reason refuse. And <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I looked it up. I looked up like Juilliard and all these things. And I was like, I'm going to apply. And then I set up an audition date because you have to audition. And I never went. Because I was like, well, I'm not going to get in. And I literally don't know anything about acting or theater. I did like two plays, but I really didn't immerse myself in like that community until school. Um, like I did plays, but I really like I was in sports and smoked a lot of weed and, you know, like did a lot of other things that I really wasn't like in that community. Um, but I for I sure, gave you a good life foundation, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it like... I probably wanted to be like in that community, but I just wasn't. And you know, whatever. So I didn't, uh, I didn't go to my audition. And then instead I went to Kent state, uh, which they used to write. Can't, uh, they used to call it. Can't read. Can't write. Kent state. <laughs> <laughs> which is like not fair. Cause I'm, I think it's like a pretty great school. <laughs> Yeah, I, if you're a college, you're probably yeah, accredited. like you're doing like, yeah. you're doing good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I did not go to class. I went to class for maybe three weeks, and I went as a theater major. But you aren't in an acting class. You're like learning mm. how to sew, and like mm. I was like, I don't want to do this. So I smoked a lot of weed and played a lot of Halo. Sure. And uh, sure. And I slept just all day <laughs> and did not go to class and got kicked out. Sure. There's like sure. a crow over me and I feel very like ominous right now. Yeah. As you should. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jesus. Um, and um, I got kicked out, uh, obviously. And yeah. uh, my mom was mad at me. And then um, she was like, you should go to hair school. Uh, cause then if you, when you move to LA, cause she was for some reason really supportive and she said, when you move to LA, I don't want you to like have to like be a waitress, which of course I still was. Um, I want you to like <laughs> have a backup plan. So she's like, you know, you need to trade, you need to do something with your hands, which is just such good advice. And so I learned how to like cut hair and dye hair and all that stuff. And I was in this relationship on and off from when I was 15 until I was 21 and it was not good. And he would break up with me all the time. And when he would break, I would like put all of my focus onto him when we were together. And then when he would break up with me, I'd be like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm not even focusing on my own life at all. And so one of the times that he broke up with me, I was like, what am I doing? I literally am like working at a salon 
not something I love to do, but is fine. Um, oh, shit, hold on, sorry. I'm gonna make Harris bring me my computer charger. No worries. Yeah, computer charger. Please. Okay. Um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> 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 ah, so okay where was i so i was dating this guy and oh we broke up and i was like what am i doing i'm not like i'm literally working at a salon not my passion uh he didn't work so i just like was working to help like to like get him food and like to take us out to dinner i mean just it was crazy it was just like not great it's young 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 stuff. young yeah and um i was like i i am gonna apply for these acting schools. And so I submitted auditions for Ada and Juilliard and I got my audition dates and I cut the hair of this woman who had gotten her master's in theater from some random school. And she was like, I was like, Oh yeah. I'm like auditioning for these schools for Juilliard and for Ada and like, da, 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 and I need a monologue. But like, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about Shakespeare. I didn't know anything about monologues. And she was like, well, do you want me to, like, coach you? And I was like, yeah. So I basically cut her hair, like, twice in payment for her. And she picked monologues for me and, like, coached me on them, like, a couple of times, like, maybe two or three times. And I went to Chicago, auditioned for Juilliard, didn't get in. Uh, in fact, no one from my audition day got a call back. Whoa. I mean, it is. They take one, 19 people, people know, a year. I was going to say, like, one of the hardest, probably, schools, period, period. to get into. They take, Not just acting. They take 19 just, acting students a year. Yeah. Approximately. Thousands. Yeah. Thousands. Thousands and thousands. Yeah. Nobody got a callback. And I certainly didn't deserve one at the time. I forgot my monologue halfway through uh, for one of them. Oh, the, that's the worst. Oh, and, and, just and I had to sing. I had to sing. <laughs> Oh, in the middle of it. Straight up forgot in the middle of it. And I had to sing a song, which I had prepared. I, like, took singing lessons. I, I sang, um, was it Yesterday by the Beatles? It might have been Let It Be. Oh, buddy. Uh, yeah. And, oh, my God, Harris isn't responding. I'm just going to take my computer with me. Um, yeah, do your thing. And grab my computer charger. So, uh, do you want me to keep talking now, or are you just going to cut this part out? What is it, fiction? What is it, fiction? Yeah, it's a novel. It's it's for my book club. Feel free to join. Um, oh, I love the idea of a book club. Yeah. Because I love to read. It's been, I found them challenging if I don't like the book. Yeah, that's fair. Um, this yeah. is our fourth book in book club. And it's been so great. I've been wanting to do a book club for so long. And, like, it's been good. I think everyone's picked, like, not necessarily books I would have picked up, but like good books. Yeah. Do you try and read them or do you ever listen? Oh, I'll listen if I like. I started listening to this, but this one's hard to listen to because it's some a, are hard. It's a book about an acting school. Um, it's like a mystery sort of thriller that takes place at an acting school. Perfect, mm. and. <laughs> Like a lot of the dialogue, it it'll say like who's saying the dialogue. So the narrator is like Richard, dialogue, Carol, mm. dialogue, and I'm like, wait, is that dialogue or are you mm. saying the name of the person yeah. talking? I was like, Richard. I have to, I have to read it. I have to read it. <laughs> yeah, but I will listen <laughs> to books. <laughs> I've been listening to that Rick Rubin on creativity, and that's been very nice lately. Ooh. I need to take a break um, from murder, so I'm like... Yeah, it's a new one. I don't know if you know Rick Rubin is. Mm -mm. He's, you could argue he's the most successful music producer of all time. Oh. And he just, like, if you ever saw him, you'd be like, this guy? Because he looks like, you know, he's, like, super long white hair, big, huge beard, but he, like, produced Eminem, Jay-Z, Beastie Boys, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers, like... Just goes on and on Amazing. and on. Amazing. And he's not and an he asshole? he just did that. No. In wow. fact, his whole thing is like, don't worry about the money ever. Do art. Art's supposed oh, to be divisive. Like, him. it's all, like, really 
foundational and the chapters are like two to three minutes so you just listen to it and it like uplifts you you know yeah yeah i love but, that uh, let's get back to okay, yeah. ada we just were talking about juilliard, so juilliard and yes. the audition so i auditioned mm-hmm. uh, nobody got a call back fine and then i my that boyfriend we he was moving to detroit to start a record label because of course he was and I, <laughs> it didn't do well, by the way. And I, <laughs> that's neither here nor there, but it is a fact. Yeah, but, um, but we should mark it. We should, we, we should say just for the sake of the story, it didn't succeed. And um, I went with him to Detroit. Um, and oh, wow. Then, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't Detroit. So this is after Kent State. Yeah. After Kent State, after okay. Paul Mitchell Hair School, I went to okay. Detroit um, for like a summer. And we were, him and I were at a pet store. Do not buy pets at a pet store. But, you know, 2009, I was <laughs> so stupid. And uh, we were trying to buy a dog, a French bulldog puppy together. And yeah. we needed like something. We needed like a, an, a roommate signature something. So we called our one of our roommates. And he was like, uh, yeah, that's fine. Hey, Anastasia, you have a huge package or you have a huge envelope here from some acting school in California. Uh, and I was like, oh. So he came back there to get the roommate and the uh, the pack paperwork obviously was my acceptance into ADA. Mm. So this was June, early June, and I had to move to LA in September. So wow. we were like, oh, well, we're not going to go back and get this puppy. Like, I'm obviously going to move to California. And I was, like, really sad about it because it meant that we were going to break up and, you know, like, whatever. Um, so that was crazy. Uh, so we left Detroit. I came back to Cleveland. Like, we, I, we decided, my parents and I, that I was going to move. Uh, and, yeah, my dad, like... He, I brought two suitcases, he brought two suitcases, and we, like, came to L.A. He, like, dropped me off. Wow. Wow. To go to Ada. And so you'll have to tell me a little bit about Ada, like, structurally. Like, are you living on campus? Like, so, how many years was it? Okay. So how rigorous schedule? The schedule is, is Monday through Friday. Um, yeah, it's, like, nuts, right? It's nuts. It's, it's like all full, day. Yeah. Uh, it's full time. Full time. Um, you don't pick your classes your assigned classes and everybody takes the same ones um mm. uh there's like it started i think there was like 111 people in our year something like that maybe less uh it's a three-year program sort of um and so you go and there's no now the student housing, the, the school has purchased a building adjacent to the uh, school and made a little walkway. Mm. So there is student housing that is like from the school. At the time, it was like some scam company. And there was like four of us living in a two bedroom apartment that was furnished with like, uh, like a plywood coffee table and like <laughs> twin beds. And you're yeah. paying $1,400 a month in 2009. To, which is literally and and you don't know you don't know any better because you're coming yeah, from no, you don't. wherever yeah. the fuck ohio thinking like well this is normal it might have been like 1100 yeah. still way too still much still for that time yeah what so four thousand dollars for a two-bedroom apartment no that apartment itself Whoa. cost maybe twelve hundred dollars i'm sure and then the company's yeah, pocketing yeah. the rest yeah. And they did checks. Absolutely. They did monthly checks on our apartments. We weren't allowed to have alcohol. And I was 21. Anyway, wow. it doesn't matter. So uh, we it's lived there. Though. It is really interesting. And we, so we lived in these like student housing, which was walkable, wa- walking distance to the school, um, which that part was cool. And the school was like nine. You either were in mornings or in afternoons. So you were either, mm. so maybe it wasn't full time, um, but it was either like, nine to one or two to six and i was almost always in the afternoon which was great because i slept in (laughs) and and it was like acting class uh vocal production so singing but the point wasn't like to be a good singer it was like to be a good actor through the songs which i did not understand Mm -hmm. and 
got yelled at. Because <laughs> uh, I was very embarrassed about singing in front of everybody. Yeah, it's so fucking hard. It's so hard and it's so scary and like vulnerable. It's so vulnerable. But I oh, didn't yeah, understand. First... No, go ahead. No, I was going to say my first voice lesson, I started weeping on the floor. And I was like, what's happening? I'm 24, maybe, 23. Yeah. Had not done any kind of self-analysis yet. And my teacher was like, oh, this is very normal. Your voice is connected to your trauma. And I was like, what? <laughs> trauma? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was bad. Anyway, you were saying it it's, wild. they're making you sing. But but the point was to act, you know, because you're doing musical theater songs mm-hmm. and, like, you have to act through the song. So vocal production, acting, where we just did, like, scene work and stuff. Um, and other, like, pretty humiliating, intense, like, personal, weird work. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, voice and speech. So we did like, uh, first year was getting rid of our regional dialects and learning in their international phonetic alphabet and um, mm. being so that you can learn how to do dialects afterwards. Because if you know IPA, the phonetic alphabet, you can figure out where to put your mouth for any accent. My, it was Whoa, fascinating. How cool. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, Kyle's really good at that. He'll be like, oh, this accent, it's up here. And up, and you're like, yes. what? He's like, yeah, that's how it... It's crazy. If you really look at, like, yeah. the chart and you're like, oh, like, in Scottish, like, um, instead of life, it'd be... Oh, well, that's a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not expecting well, you to come up with the perfect example. Life, family, family uh, Korea. Okay, so, like, Korea instead of career. Mm. And you know the, like, the little... Um, symbols for all those sounds and then you write it out in the yeah. Scottish one and you're like oh I can pronounce this easily and then you just memorize it that way oh yeah whoa it's like a blueprint yeah fully I and it's that. so I interesting love that. yeah um, so we so voice and speech we had movement you know uh, stage combat yeah. what other classes Alexander technique but not always that was really just first year um yeah, and it was really cool. And then you do exam plays at the end of every semester. Um, you get cast in a play. Um, and But only just, like, it was one act of a play. You didn't do the full play. <laughs> and we just... <laughs> I don't know. For time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. And we just did them in the classroom um, for just the other students who wanted to come and teachers. So it was, like, strictly just, like, for being graded on mm. voice work your acting, your movement, like all that stuff. Um, so then you do the first year and then you have to get invited back for the second year. Oh, shit. And so people who were like missing a lot or who weren't doing the work didn't get invited back. So they probably didn't invite back like 20 people. So then oh, wow. the second year started with like 80 people and the second year is like more intense. Um, everybody gets double cast for their exam play for the first semester um, mm. so you're doing, you're memorizing two different plays. Uh, it's like, we start to learn dialects. Um, we had a Shakespeare class. Oh man. A styles class, which is like, so her room, her, her classroom was so cool. Cause it was all like big petticoat skirts and like swords. Mm. And we learned like, you know, it wasn't just, it wasn't. Shakespeare we did learn some Shakespeare from her but we had like a Shakespeare class her stuff was like how to memorize Shakespeare with different techniques on how to do it um and then we did just like old plays like stylistic period plays. I love that it was really cool uh, and we had a theater history class which was also if, very interesting wow if you could distill like what are one, two, three things you took from that experience that you still employ today or something that stuck with you? They're like, yeah, that works for me or that makes sense to me or that definitely didn't make sense. You know what I, they taught so many different acting techniques, you know, they thought they taught like method acting and like we did Uta Hagen mm-hmm. and we did all that stuff. And I definitely realized that like none of those are for me. 
which is fine and that like totally whatever you need to do is great as long as you're not harming other people mm. like some method actors do and yeah. i learned how to memorize I, so i memorize very well which is a huge um privilege <laughs> of mine uh i memorize really easily but what i did learn from that school was memorizing the way that you're going to perform it. So if you're sitting like, so for, if I have an audition and I have to do a self tape and it's due tonight, if I'm standing up, I'm, I have to memorize it standing up. I have to like be standing up. Oh, mm -hmm. It's like in my body that way. Cause if I memorize it sitting and then I stand up, I immediately forget it. Mm. And that is true for me that. very much. I love that for you. Yeah. It's great. Um, <clears throat> I, do you find that oh, is that just for auditions or anything. for even when you have the part if i have okay. the part too i mean i really try to have it so memorized for if i have the part like that mm. it just doesn't matter like it should be the words yeah. aren't the most important it's yeah. like you're just living in it and that way you have the freedom yeah. to like sit if you need to sit i mean if you're obviously yeah. if you're doing something filmed you can't just like wander around willy-nilly because yeah. you're on camera but like in a play you can like sit, you can stand, you can get up, like whatever. Yeah. And and also having it so memorized, oh, this is where improv really everybody needs to know shit. improv. Yeah. Is if somebody <clears throat> else stumbles on a line or or whatever, you can like like sneak your way back into it easily. Absolutely. So improv's like the secret skill that everybody needs to do <sighs> in entertainment. It's also where I had my first improv class, was at Ada. Oh, wow. It's where I was like, oh, I love this. <laughs> I love comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into that. Well, Let's okay, talk wait, about so hold comedy. on. And then, the, and then yeah. there's a third year program. There's a third year. <coughs> oh, shit. But you yeah. have to audition That's for right. it. You mentioned. So you audition for the third so year. So at this point, are you like, because I, I, I fell into this trap at my acting school. But I so I imagine they're present at every acting school, like where it's a little guru cultish, and this cult's totally. not the right word because no one's suiciding each other. But it's like got that fervorish, oh, like my yeah, absolutely. So were you in, in it? Yeah, or were you already judging it like I was at the end? A, a little bit of both. I mean, there is an aspect of it of like this place, right? Right. We yeah. we all know yeah. we're in on it, but then also like please pick me. Right. Totally. I mean, I auditioned for companies, <laughs> so like I obviously cared enough. And company yeah. is great because instead of going to class, you're just going to rehearsals. So you're just doing shows in the theater, and anybody can come to that. It's like open to the public. Uh, oh wow! And the first and second years have to see every company show, and there's four series of shows, and every series has about four shows in it. Four, four. So you get to do at least four shows in the year. Sometimes you get Whoa. double cast. So it's really fun. And you literally like you have a couple weeks to memorize it. And then you have three performances and you're done. <laughs> like It's wow. fully like on a stage. Is this like set. also industry showcase as well? There for is you guys an industry well? showcase at the end. Yeah. And you met Bryce in this period of your life? So Bryce was a year below me. Um, and when you're in company, so you have to have like a little job when you're a first and second year student, like building sets or like ushering the shows or like mm. whatever. Uh, and you can stage manage for company. And usually it's like set people who do it because they know how to do it and they have relationships with the directors. And Bryce was one of the stage managers for company. So mm. he's stage I can managed. see him being really good at that. He's great because he's so smart and like, uh, He's smart and, and, and like, like takes direction well and, like, will just, like, get things mm -hmm. done. You know what I mean? Efficient or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he was I don't know great him like this, but he seems to be organized. Organized, yes. That's exactly the yeah, word. He seemed, yeah, he seems, like, to really, like, if I gave him something, he's going to figure out the best way to do it. Yeah. He yeah. was very good at that. So it was great, and that's how we met. We met because I did a... We actually met... Because, oh, 
your grad show for second year, you finish with a big, big show on the stage, your first time on the stage, your parents get to come. It's a big deal. And I got put into two grad shows. Um, I got double cast and one of them was a just crazy wacky play. It's like a film noir style. (laughs) Makes no sense. And the director was drunk and a hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely was drunk. I mean, how could you not how be could drunk? You not you know? be? <laughs> and I played the like femme fatale type part of it. So there's a scene where I'm like coming out of a pool onto the stage. So I'm in a bathing suit. And I was like, do I have to be in a bathing suit? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. It feels unnecessary, but fine. And he was like, we'll spray you down with water backstage. So you're wet. And I was like, well, sure. (laughs) Acting. I get it. Sure. Yeah. So Bryce had to spray me down backstage. (laughs) And that was how we met. (laughs) It was during that. Oh, my God. I love that. Yeah. It was a beautiful (laughs) show. Yeah. It's called Dark Rapture. It makes no sense. Sure, sure. Yeah. As you do. <laughs> so you finish your third year. Yes, yes, yes. And what's your feeling coming out of it? Like, did you have somewhere to go? Or were you kind of like, well, now what? Which I find a lot of artists do after school. Yeah. Like I, did. I mean, I certainly, there's, there's definitely that. Uh, I... I had an improv class at ADA in my second year. And so I immediately was like, oh, I want to do this. I really want to like, I found out more about groundlings. And I was like, I'm going directly to the groundlings. Like, this is what I want to do. I want to like go through that program. So I like left school and was like, I'm going back to school. Uh, (laughs) And I auditioned for groundlings. And that's like, and I was like, I'm doing this. Um, Mm. And I auditioned and then did the first two levels And there was a group of us, uh, eight of us, who were in basic together, passed, and then were in the same intermediate class together, which is crazy. Happened to Yeah. Um, There's so many classes they offer, so the likelihood is like... Wild. And this is 2012. Um, And, oh my God, I'm going to get stung by this B. And I know. It's been after me for days. (laughs) so i we all oh i like i wasn't feeling like super confident i mean it was my first improv class outside of ada and like the one at ada was like you know whatever so i was like groundlings is an intense school with an incredible reputation yeah they're so intense it's very like pass fail uh Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good people next to you all of a sudden so i mean literally um there was a guy in my class who was on, ended up being on SNL for a season, but still, John Rednitsky, that's his name. Um, mm. And, like, other people who were so talented. Um, so I left. I was like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to come back after I've, like, had more classes elsewhere. And I think that's just about when we met because that's when I went to – because my brother was at Playhouse West. Mm. I was wondering how you got to play. So this was like 2013 ish. I did a couple of classes at the groundlings. I was like working and auditioning, but like, you know, not, I I didn't really know. They don't prepare you. I think at Ada enough for the realities of like life outside of school. Like it's not, that's right. It's not just, get an agent and do auditions. It's like, but you have to be so proactive about that. And like, here are the ways to do that. Like get an IMDb pro. Mm-hmm. If you can afford it, like look up agents, mm-hmm. like look up how, how to contact people without feeling like an asshole, like how to get the clout or like how to, no, they don't even really oh, go. No, ahead, no, sorry. no. Say what you were going to say. I was just going to say like my experience with that is from playhouse and I have a similar gripe which was, like, they had no business sense. Like, you know, like, for example, there was a teacher there who got discovered without a headshot. Well, no one at the staff was like, 
hey, this is a complete fucking fluke right. anomaly, but it was, in fact, used the other way. Like, it became a myth and a legend, and I, amongst others, were like, well, I guess I don't need this industry right. standard. And, you know, I almost got kicked out of an agent meeting because of it. And I just found in reflection, like, they don't talk to you about, they talk about, like, the subject of rejection, but they don't tell you how it's going to come. Like, it's not like somebody's going, no, to your face. Right. Uh, rejection comes in never hearing again or being lied to your fucking face yeah. and nothing happening, you know? And that's where I relate to you in that way. Like, it just, they didn't set us up business-wise. They really, I mean, and we had, like, a business of acting class. There's two of them. <laughs> Three. Okay. They had, like, a business of acting class. But I don't think that that they really went over, like, what it actually is like. Like, the true realities mm. of it. Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah, some people might get, like, discovered working at Target. Like, maybe. Yeah. But, like, probably yeah. not. And, like, you know, maybe your thing is you need to constantly be in class. And that's great. And then, like, you need to figure out a way to maintain that. Like, maybe your thing is uh, is finding like-minded people, which is, I think, the way that I went. Which is, like, finding your people. Finding the people mm -hmm. who you vibe with, who you write well with, perform well with. And, like, where every time you're hanging out, you're coming up with, like, really fun, great ideas and then figuring out the next steps with that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, everybody should have that, but that may, maybe not everybody's path. But yeah, so, yeah, I, I yeah. Anyway. Came, you came to Playhouse. I came to Playhouse, yeah. and I, yeah. but just to take improv class, I was like, I'm not trying to get back into like an acting yeah, program. Like I remember Ada. that. Because I had yeah, just I left that. Ada, I just left this like, really intense program and i i actually did do a month of acting class there and i just was like people have very different nah. experiences and i think that that's great for them my experience was we were doing doors and activities and if somebody cried it was like man that was really good work and if someone didn't it was like hey what's going on like, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Not every acting scene is crying, so I don't really know what this is. Like, yeah, no, I hear you. One of my favorite gripes, as like, you know, if we're talking about the minutia of acting, because I feel like that's what you just touched on a little bit, is something only an actor who's seasoned in an acting class would pick up on. For me, it's eye contact acting. Oh. Like, this whole thing of like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude. Have you ever revealed your heart to somebody? Like, you're looking at your feet. You're looking everywhere but the person because it's so vulnerable. Sometimes. But you'll see these scenes where they're, like, <laughs> like saying their fucking biggest truth. And I just find that interesting. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, it, was too, it was just a lot. And I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I think that's part of what I was mentioning earlier. It's like you had such a sense of yourself already, like to be able to make that decision. Yeah, that's true. Like kudos to you. Cause I think I was probably one of the people who gave you shit for like, maybe not a, like a huge amount, but like, you're not in the acting school. Cause I didn't get it. Um, I didn't have the perspective yet that I had now. No. So it's just, it's cool to see. Yeah. I like, <clears throat> but I liked the improv program. I mean, it was fun. It was definitely like a very, uh, I liked I wish there was something like this now. I was just talking to Harris about this. Like, I wish that I could go and join an improv class that wasn't like a one on one on one class. Yeah. That was just like no, um, like no pressure class, you know? Because it's like Groundlings, UCB, like all these programs. I mean, those are really only the only two that are left. But like, I know. so much pressure. Fuck. I know. And that was the nice thing about Playhouse West. It was like no pressure. And you got to perform all the time. Yeah. I mean, how much better did we all get? Because we got to perform like every week. <laughs> Dude, I did the math. Like, 
over a thousand shows, I think, yeah. during those years. Like, because we were doing so many. Yeah, I mean, and then we when we started like producing our own shows there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly oh you guys, because you guys did Tuesday Night Improv for seven years. Four years. Yeah. Four years. Oh yeah, longer. Yeah, four years on Tuesday night, but seven years kind of as a traveling band. Right. It's fucking nuts. nuts. I, when I tell people that, sometimes they're like, what? You're on a team longer than three months? I know. I'm like, yeah. It's truly yeah. shocking. I've been on other teams, and they never lasted. You know, I was no. on UCB teams, and it's no fault of anybody. It's just not easy. Yeah. I, I think about that, too. I've honestly considered hitting up Gabe at Playhouse to be like, dude, let's start the program again, and we'll just, like, See what happens. Like no pressure. Hasn't Let's he see. been doing the program? <clears throat> Hasn't he been teaching improv? No, he teaches acting. He doesn't have oh. an improv program anymore. Uh, at least, I mean, I just had him on like a month ago. No, I'm sure he would have said. Yeah, but because uh, I was even considering going back to playoffs, but you know, he was like, nah. just not like. I just was like, I'll go for a month and do a play because I love to act and then shit just keeps coming up where I'm like eh maybe not hey but, I'm uh, in a theater company you're welcome to audition for any of our shows I I follow you guys and I, I often look at the casting and I'm like if I fit the part I would we're doing a play uh, in the fall um that I'm gonna be the lead of and hell yeah uh, it's amazing yeah, I th I think you'd be good for one of the parts. Anyway, well, let me know. I will. We can talk about it yeah. offline. Absolutely, I'm. I'm super interested. I'm just diving more and more into. Like over Christmas, December was really big for me personally. I sort of broke apart my resistance to success. Mm. Um, I was in therapy, and she was like, "Oh, like you don't believe you're going to be successful," and I was like, "Ugh." It's so fucking true. Yeah, that's so And that's so, so crazy because I'm like here trying every day. So why would I try at something I know I'm not going to be successful at? So I immediately went down to the beach and took a little microdose, mm -hmm. which is my first time doing it after therapy, but it felt like super important, you know? Yeah. How and was the other that? thing right there... I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it was, it changed my life, honestly. I've done, I used psilocybin and psychedelics uh, medicinally for the last two years and it's saved my life. But this particular thing was like uh, on my own. So she said two things. My, my therapist, Suzanne, got to give her credit because she saved my life. But she said, it's like you built a ship. In Europe, like in England, you sailed all the way across the Atlantic and you moored just off the coast. And now you're waiting for somebody else to bring you in. Yeah. She's like, it's you, man. Like you, well, you're right there. You're looking at the shore. You're doing it. And then that success piece. So I went down to the beach and I sat with that. And what I realized, I just started asking myself questions, which is kind of what I try and do these days. It's like, all right, let me just see if this fear I have is true. And if it is true, let's run it out to the finish line to see if it's actually scary. So I was like, all right, I don't believe I'm successful. Is that true? And I'm like, no, I do. Like, I'm successful. Not to where I want to be, but there's something here, so let's explore. I was like, oh, have I ever been successful? And I was like, yes. When? Oh, when I was a kid, like, in school and uh, athletics, like, very successful. Okay. Well, what was the result of that success? Oh, mm. uh, my parents were actually super shitty around that. Oh, so I already have had success and seen that it doesn't benefit me, actually. So why would I head towards success? Right. And then I realized the other hand of success, the idea of good success, like I'm successful and my parents were like, good job, hug, whatever the ideal that was also appalling to me because a kid who isn't hugged or kissed, nurtured, like I used to date girls in my 20s and they'd hug me and it would hurt because I was so unused to physical contact that was nurturing. And so I realized I'd put myself in two 
awful definitions of success. So no, no wonder my subconscious was like repelled by it. And ultimately I realized like, oh, I'm still doing this for other people. Yeah. And as long as I try and be successful for myself, then that's all that fucking matters. And so that was the big shift for me. And the reason I brought that up is because I really was able to sit in December and be like, what do I want to spend my precious days doing and working on? And who do I want to be with? And one of those answers was improv, you know? And um, yeah. Yeah, so a long way to kind of get to that point, but uh, I love improv. I miss it. I don't know how it falls back into the fold, you know, because of what you said earlier, like UCB and Groundlings kind of have it by the throat. There's a few theaters like uh, West Side Comedy. Mm -hmm. They do an open audition for their main stage every three months, and it's killers. Like I saw Lisa Gilroy there. There's killers there. Lisa um, just performs literally every inch of this town. Yeah. Yeah, I had a UCB class with her. She was amazing. Um, she's but she's she's next level. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, your whole crew is fucking amazing, all you guys. But, um, yeah, so we, we're on improv. Yep. How did you get in a sketch? That was kind of just hand-in-hand hand with improv. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because I really have never called myself a writer. I I don't, I just did the other day for the first time. And Harris was like, wow. um, Did you notice that you just called yourself a writer? I was like, well, it's because I have to write this Mm -hmm. thing. And he's like, right. But you are a writer. Anyway. You are. Yeah. I'm glad you you were able to say that for yourself. You deserve it. I really, I, I love acting and I love performing and like sketch i love getting somebody else's like script in my hand and getting to just like be wacky on somebody Mm -hmm. else's words um Mm -hmm. but yeah i i guess like that only really came about because of the groundlings because if anyone doesn't know the first three levels are improv and then it goes to the sketch writing track which is writing lab and advanced writing lab uh, with the goal of getting into Sunday Company. And so for Writing Lab, if you pass into it, there's no, like, writing portion. And then Writing Lab itself is like, okay, now go home and write a monologue. And you're like, what? How do I oh, structure that? That seems silly. There's no, this is how to structure a sketch. This is how, like, whatever. So you're just supposed to go in the first three levels, figure out how to find your own characters and how to, like, do that. They've changed it, I think, recently. The third level is now sort of a combination of improv and writing. And I think that they're Mm. trying to gear it towards like creating character and then how to write for that character, which like thank God they're doing that for people. Um, But so I, so I, I started writing lab and then I ended up getting really sick and I had to drop it. And I was glad that I did because there's no way I would have passed. And because I just like didn't know. My teacher kept giving me the note of like, this feels written. And I was like, well, because it is. Because I wrote it. <laughs> and I like didn't understand what that meant. And now, yeah. of course, I do. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you can literally see you writing this. Like, this doesn't sound like a human mm-hmm. thing to say. Like, this character is mm-hmm. not saying this out of like their insides. And there was this teacher from the Groundlings who started teaching a class outside of the Groundlings with like a, not necessarily invite only, but you had to hear about it from somebody. It wasn't like advertised anywhere. And so somebody was like, Hey, uh, I'm taking this class with Jay Lay. You should come like join. It's like a sketch writing class and we do a show at the end. And I was like, sure. And I hated it at first because it felt very clicky which it was, which they, are, yeah. which they all are. But then I met all of the people that I know now from this class. So I like, Oh, I didn't realize that. Except for like Alina, um, who I do most of the stuff with. She was in my yeah. advanced improv class at the groundlings. So we met, uh... we met in class, um, her and then my other friend, Mary Alice, but then everybody else, uh, Lisa, I also had writing lab with, so I met her in writing lab. But everyone else I met at this, like, 
Jay Lay class. So all of my other girlfriends, like all of these people. So we started doing these these classes. Like Nikki, Nikki, and Nicole. I met in mm. in Jay Lay's class. We did a couple shows together. Uh, like Nicole, my friend Sabrina, my friend Chandler, Caitlin went to Ada. Um, so I've actually known her for longer than anyone else in LA. Uh, technically, oh wow, yeah, she was a year above me, and we were. Like, we were friends, but not, you know, we didn't really hang out that much. And then, like, years later, I realized she was at the Groundlings. So I was like, you do comedy? Which, hilarious mm. now. And so, but she was also in the JLA program. So I, like, got to re-know her through that as well. So, and then a bunch of, like, the guys in that, like, little circle, too. So, yeah, I mean, every, all of the people I work with now, I know from that program. And... It was it was so fun for a while, and then it kind of like started. We were like, "Well, why are we paying? We're paying so much money to do this, and it was a lot, and there wasn't like a discount for coming back." Mm. So it was like four hundred and fifty bucks, and then you do a show at the end, mm. which was cool. But like, well, we can do this ourselves, so we started doing it ourselves, and the Comedy Central stage, which is no longer like owned by the same people so it's not the same oh really yeah damn that stage was sick it was the best because it was free to use free to see shows there so easy to sell it out so a bunch of us started doing that like nicole produced a couple of shows and uh just wow i went to one of those yeah had people in that and then uh and then me and alina produced one under like the unfunny feminist's name with all women right before the pandemic. So it was like February, 2020, we did this show Mm. and then we were, we already reached out to comedy central to do another one. And we were set for April, but then the pandemic hit, obviously it never happened, but like we, so us like women were, we did this show and then we were in this group chat together because of the show but then throughout the pandemic, we stayed in this group chat and it's sort of like, I don't know. It's just, it, it was and is like such a great place to go during the pandemic. Like we all would like vent to each other. We talked to each other. We had like mm. fa- group FaceTimes and like of all mm. very insanely talented women who, mm-hmm. I mean, during the pandemic, like half of them like worked themselves into absolute success and you know it was like it's such a great it was a really great thing to like be around i think which goes back to what i was saying earlier about like finding people who are doing what you want to do and who you admire i mean in my opinion everybody every single one of my friends is like more talented than i am and i would hope that they would say the same Mm. thing about everyone else around them because you want to be around people that are better than you and learn from that's right and everybody has their skills too you know like yeah i think like that is the biggest lesson with the first thing that you have to learn is like to let go of ego and like like it's one thing to be self aware and like confident and you should definitely be those things but like also be aware when somebody else has a skill that you don't that like oh, well, I'm going to cast this person because they're so good at this thing that I can't do. So why wouldn't I want my project to be as best as it can be? <sighs> wise words. Right? That's wise words. And a lot of people don't follow that. I, yeah. I've tried to do the same thing. Like I often will look around at the five people I'm hanging out with the most and be like, am I going up or going down right. in this equation? And that's not a knock. Like it's, I used to have a lot of attachment to the result of that, but now I'm like, dude, it's all, it's, it's all love, man. It's just like, it's truly all love as cheesy or cliche as that might sound, but I got to do what's best for me. And I found that like my favorite part is collaboration. Yes. Like, cause I've worked with producers who are like, no, it's mine. And I'm like, then why are we here? Right. Like, really, I'm here for a better idea, baby. Like, 
if I pitch you something and you're on top of it and then I'm on top of that and we're all of a sudden we're up here instead of my original idea, which is down here. And I also learned <clears throat> my buddy worked for the president of Warner Brothers. This is years ago, like 2008 or nine. And he worked there for five years and they became like familial and like, you know, he would house sit for the guy and stuff. And as he was leaving five years into it, his boss was like, hey, would you mind helping me hire the person who replaces you? And he was like, sure. And he said it was crazy. He's like, dude, you have Yale, Harvard, Oxford, people all in suits. Because this is a huge, op- he was making 60 grand a year as an assistant. Right. And uh, obviously the opportunity to be under the president of Warner Brothers. And he said he ended up hiring this like drunken Irish kid. And he asked his boss, he was like, why'd you hire him? And he said his boss was like really inappropriate and the, not like sexually gross, but he would, he wasn't an HR friendly interview. Uh-huh. And my buddy asked him like, why? Like, why'd you do that? And he's like, look at our business. He's like, I got to be able to bring someone to a red carpet or go meet with Leo DiCaprio or go meet Viola Davis. And they got to be like a person. Right. You know, like I want to also he's like, I'm going to be around them for 10 to 12 hours a day. He's like, I already know their workload by their resume. So if I ask him an off color question, he's like, I often can get a sense of somebody just by the way they even absorb the question. And but his biggest thing was like, I can teach this job to anybody. Right. But, uh, can I be around anybody for 10 to 12 hours a day? And I've taken that with me. Like on my last movie, I my producer didn't have a ton of producing experience, but he's the fucking best person to be around all day when shit gets stressful. And I knew I could teach him if I had the patience. And the result was really beneficial for me. That's so great. I think it's super wise. And I think you're seeing it bear fruit again and again for yourself totally i mean it's so wild it's so like finding the people that you just like like to be around the other day alina and i filmed a sketch where we were bouncers like like dudes so fucking good and we were literally in her apartment covered in like fake beards (laughs) improvising in her living room and then afterwards we were like sitting on her bed this was truly one of the, we were having like a very serious conversation but still with like the makeup <laughs> so we're just sitting there like talking <laughs> and i couldn't stop laughing and she had said and and i agreed like man this is this is it like i just love doing this like getting together with your best friend and like fucking around and just making something that like you feel good about i mean it's like it's not about the views Cause I don't think, I don't even think that video did very well. Certainly not on TikTok or on my end. I don't know how it did on hers, but like I could care less. I'm very proud of it. I think mm-hmm. it's very funny. It's my kind of humor. And like, that's why oh my we God. did it. You know? So good, dude. Like genuinely I've cried laughing at so much of your content. Thanks. It's you're so funny, dude. And one thing, one word that stands out to me when I watch your group um, cause I do try and support and watch and, uh, it's commitment. Like the word commitment just rings true. Like totally, you guys are fucking bolted down in commitment and it's the best. And also like when you guys break, it's also amazing. Cause like, oh. I know you're trying to hold it together with the shit. So fucking funny. <laughs> Breaking is the best. If it's earned, it's yeah. so good. And you can tell when it's yeah. earned. Like, you can tell when yeah. the person is, like, doing it because it really made them laugh and not just, like, a nervous laughter thing. Yeah. So as we start to wrap up in the next 10, 20 or so, I wanted to touch on two things. Yep. We could touch on more. But I wanted to, because I feel like if I was observing your career objectively, like, without knowing you or... um having emotion, I guess is the wrong, I don't know how to say it, but it's like as if right before you had Rowan, Mm -hmm. you, I would say almost like, I took time off from art. Wasn't there a period where you kind of, I don't know when to say, put it down? It's been like a crazy, because five years ago I had emergency back surgery 
Um, yeah, I want to touch on that if you're open to it. Always. I'm so open about it. Uh, I had emergency spinal surgery five years ago. Um, so it came out of nowhere. I was in, like, the best shape of my life. So, like, and I, I had my issue with um, acting is I, I put a lot of it um, sort of on top of, like, how I'm feeling about myself physically. You know, it's like if I'm not feeling great, I'm like, well, I'm not going to book it anyway, so I'm not going to submit, and I'm not going to audition. Literally making up the decision for the casting directors about whether or not to put me in stuff. So I'm like, well, I don't mm. look like my best, so obviously I'm not going to get cast, which my head knows is bullshit, but my heart is like, no, no, this is, like, true. So, but I was so focused on, like, working out, and I was so, like, crazy about it that I, I wasn't even, like, really auditioning then either, which is so, it's so funny. Um, and then my back got messed up and I was out for, I was recovering for a really long time. And then like it, when I hurt my back, it left me with a lot of like nerve damage. So it sort of like took away a lot and, um, like half my legs are numb, partially half of my foot is numb. Like my bladder is partially numb. So all these things. And I was very depressed for a while and I was so like consumed by all of that that I just like couldn't see through the fog of it um so I definitely wasn't I was doing sketch I was doing the JLA class that I talked about um which probably helped a lot I think being around all of that but I just like wasn't really doing anything else and then the pandemic hit and then I had Rowan and like who's hiring a pregnant woman, uh, which is like, why? Cause Harris and I have talked about having a second kid and I'm like, I need a minute because once I get pregnant, I'm not auditioning, which like mm. I'm again, I'm deciding that for the casting directors. Right. I'm sure there are rules for pregnant women. I'm sure like I, that's just like my own thing. So I think it's both. Yeah. And I think you're not, unwise to take that into consideration and fuck it yeah. as well yeah 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 but so i'm like well no one's you know and then after i give birth i need time physically to recover and then i'm like breastfeeding yeah. so like i'm literally just renting out my body to another person for like a solid year and a half pregnant and then wow. like breastfeeding and i'm like i need a minute where my body is mine uh mm. and then i'm like fine with having a second kid so yeah, we had Rowan and then like during the pandemic. And so it really wasn't until sort of recently that I've been like, and, and during the pandemic, I lost my agent and my manager. They both stopped doing their careers. So yeah. I don't have rep in LA as of now. I have rep in Cleveland and I have rep in Denver, which is recent. Um, and then I, this is so crazy. I'm having back surgery again in next Monday. Whoa. So I'm about to be out again for a little bit. It won't be quite as bad uh, as last time because this time I have time to prepare. So like, I think the recover the recovery won't be as bad. And like, because I know it's coming, I think the emotional part isn't, isn't there, you know, like I'm okay with it. Uh. Yeah. So, yeah, there's been a lot of like pauses. So, like, right now, I'm like, oh, I need to get an IMDb Pro. I need to like submit to some agents. Um, you know, I talked to my brother. I'm like, hey, can I submit to your agent? Uh, all these people. And then I'm like, well, but for what purpose? <laughs> I can't audition. I can't book anything mm. for two months. I mean, mm. I can't. I won't be allowed to move. So. A very interesting time yeah man like whew, that's a lot dude and I, know. I don't say that to be like it's a lot let's stay there it's a lot no it's no like, whew, it's a lot let's acknowledge it for yourself and it's and it's fucking amazing to see you in what i would say is your performative best like you've always been a great performer like as long as i've known you you've been stellar but what you're doing with Russian mom and North American husband, I know it's just fun, 
maybe, but it's like really amazing work. Thanks. I mean, it is just fun, but we are, I mean, my friends and I are actively trying to put it into something else. Like, that's what my question was going to be. Like, what's the next stages for those projects if you're well, thinking about it? Yeah. Or, or even can share. Yeah. Uh, well, Nicole and Alina and I have been working on, um, so they have the same rep uh, for social media stuff. And cool. so, and they have been asked to, well, Nicole was asked, I think, maybe to do a tour. She was like, I don't really know like what that would mean. Da, da, da. So then the three of us started talking about like, what if we did a show and then with the goal of touring it, um, a couple cities like across the U S and then, Oh my God. That's so amazing. The goal would be to do just the three of us. And then in every city we would have, um, a local female presenting or non-binary, uh, performer perform with us and either give them so we would probably give them like 10 minutes to perform and then maybe we would write a sketch with like an open part that would like be easy to plug somebody in and then like you could get a local person to oh i love that also like, like snl style almost yeah totally um so that was the goal and i think right now um what we were about to do before we scheduled my surgery for when it is is perform here. So we're trying to get a location here, like at some theater to do a show and then maybe sort of see where that goes. So the first step is doing a show here, which we started working on and is on pause until I'm recovered. So I think April will open back up. Cool. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. That'd be really fun. I love to hear that, and I hope it wasn't reductive to call it fun. But no, like that's it was. Like it is the most so important, fun. F- important part to me, and there's just so much potential as I watch them, and like you know what Alina's doing, and I, I don't know Nikki, but I, I try and follow her work because of her relationship to you. Because I, I obviously feel very s- the same about Nicole, uh, Alina as well, but I know that you know her better. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. she's just so. I mean, she wrote starred in a movie that is coming out in april that got Mm. made she got it produced with a pretty big budget like and it turned out so good that literally the network was like oh this is like better than we thought it was going to be so we're actually going to submit it to festivals and then it was like hey this is better than we Uh. thought it was going to be so we're actually going to like do this this and this and it's getting a theatrical release in april whoa i know kudos to her that's fucking amazing she did that yeah absolutely i don't i haven't written a movie (laughs) and that's your crew it's so you know what it's great you know what sketch i found the other day when i was looking through like is uh the boat sketch (laughs) we did Oh my god, just keeping a straight face on that one. Did was I tough. I think I broke in the show. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean you fucking annihilated me. Like I could not make it Man. through that sketch. I think that was you and Devin, right? Yes. I wanted to say Harris, yes, but I think yes. it was Devin. Yeah, I think it was Devin. God, that for was some so reason. fun doing those sketch shows. How much fun yeah. was that? I know. I know. It's the shit, yeah. man. I think of sketch ideas all the time, and I'm just like, what fucking format do I even do it in? But, yeah, Vinny. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think it'll come. You know, I've been talking to the Gibbons guys. Like, I mean, we're all in such different stages of life, obviously. You guys got to do something together. Oh. I, I think it's it's so wild that you haven't in so long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, three kids... Between Eddie, Fuck, you, right, Eddie. and Gabe. And then, you know, Devin sort of had a re- renaissance in his own life. Yeah. And uh, then the pandemic. So, it was just, yeah, I would I would love to do it again. I, I've been performing a little bit lately because Lish is a main stager at Westside. Mm-hmm. And so she's always going to jams and stuff. And I stepped on stage a few times and... You know, could still hang. I want to so. do an improv show so <laughs> bad. I gen- I miss it so much. Oh, it's the shit. Yeah, maybe I'll go there. Yeah. I like 
I couldn't believe it. Every three months is an open audition. And it's a, like, really reputable place. Like, Neil Brennan and Kevin Pollack. Oh. Who are... Yeah, like, and it's a beautiful, it has a bar attached to the stage. Like, it's just that it's have you in ever Santa been? Monica. It's in Santa Monica. Yeah. Yeah. But if your shows are like, I mean, fuck, nine o'clock, that's tough. I'm sleepy. Yeah, but uh, the tra- traffic is nice and easy that's true. Uh, to Santa Monica. But all right. So we're wrapping it up. Yeah. Let's see. We talked about um, well, a ton of shit. A lot. A ton of stuff. Um, Russian mom, North American husband. Yeah. Two of my, two of many, many characters you do, but two of my favorite. You know what's wild is that um, Russian mom got so much love on social media and people have like, were like, God, she's so wholesome. I'm like, okay. Mm. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I feel like you've been it. doing Russian mom, uh, since we were doing sketches on stage. I like mean, in some form it's so funny because at the groundlings you have to write monologues as like you're a parent or family member and i've tried to write mm. one as my mom so many times and i've never been able to figure out the turn because it always ends up a little too judgy when i write it mm. and then when i started doing the, this character on like social media i think it was harris who was like yeah this is the, this is it you found the like catch to make it not just like Mm-hmm. mean mm-hmm. I, I was just thinking about her earlier when I was doing my notes I was like what's the next step is it putting her like in the world like is somehow she teaching a class do you know how like sometimes right, right. on SNL like when they recur characters they'll just be in a normal situation like Will Ferrell's right. like Gus Chiggins is now teaching a class for some reason but yeah. it doesn't matter because you're in sketch and it's the fucking world. So I can't wait to see yeah. what you do next. And North American Husband's so fucking good. I mean, obviously Ugh. I know Harris, so it makes it even better. That's really but evolved just... into a very specific thing of like mispronouncing yeah. words and just like. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. It's like, what's she going to do next? And then you have the captions too. So I'm like looking right. at the word that you're just bastardizing in the most fun best way but uh thank you so as we wrap it up here um if someone wanted to work with you uh hire you uh, what's the best way to contact you is it your instagram or your yeah, tiktok instagram or? instagram okay. I, I don't think you can contact me on, on tiktok unless we follow each other i have it set to private okay. you know to keep the fans away and um sure because I, I like <laughs> sure. to keep them I want to be at a yeah. different space. Right. You got to keep your separation from Got to keep it separate. People? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd say, yeah, probably Instagram. Cool. Yeah. Which is just my name. Well, Anastasia Nerds. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have that all yeah, below. Yeah. I'll have it all. So we're here. It'll be right here as we're speaking yeah. now. Here. But I, as we go, I want to say... I fucking love you. I love you too. I think you're, thank you. I think you're an amazing person. And I'm so glad we've got to stay in contact over the years. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds because I feel like you're just getting started, truthfully. Yeah. And uh, you're here to stay. And I'm so glad you did and are still in it because yeah. it's important and you're important and i thank you for your time and your friendship hey, i feel the same way i'm very proud of you and all of your work and your movie and oh, thank you honestly it's the same thing i was just saying about nicole it's so it's so wildly impressive oh, thank and you it's so good much. i just ran into ryan um Monsica. yeah the other day at the groundlings i went and saw a show and he was sitting behind me and i was talking to him about the movie i was like i saw the movie it's uh. so good isn't he incredible he's in incredible. it? He's just like he's the a nicest. Bad guy. Yeah, I know. Oh, one thing I do want to bring up before we go for for real, for real, as I keep saying it. But I'm just curious, like, with the way things went down at the end for Groundlings, mm. how is that resolved for you? What have you learned, or what did you take away? Like, what's your piece there? Because like now that we've been in this industry long enough. 
I know a lot of people in that boat. Right. Not a lot, because a lot of people didn't even get to that place sure. you were at. But a few where there's different lessons being pulled out, and that's real. Yeah, man. I mean... You put a lot of time in, in A that. lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of money. Um, and do you want to talk about what happened? Oh, sure. Just so it's... Yeah, yeah so, so you go through the program, and at the end, it's very pass-fail. You either get into the next level or you don't, and you're done with the program. You don't get to retake mm-hmm. the class, nothing. And I, so I did writing lab. I passed into advanced writing lab. You wait literal years to take advanced writing lab. I waited, yeah. uh, well, because of the pandemic, I waited three years. Holy uh, or shit. Two, maybe two and a half, but a long time. Um, a long time. And then you take advanced writing lab. And it is like this insane program. And it's only on Saturdays, but like all day. It's like eight, nine hours on Saturdays. How many weeks? Twelve. Whoa. And you do a show halfway through and then another show at the very end. And you just have to write all week. You're meeting up with people. You're writing sketches to pitch on Saturday. And then you get notes and the sketch either gets cut or you get notes and you re- bring it back for rewrite week and then you put up a show. Um, and then the main company watches the shows and votes on you after the uh, second show. And they vote on either getting you into Sunday company or not. Um, And it's a blind vote. It's like a piece of paper. And Mm. it just is majority, I think. Oh, wait, is it majority or it has to be unanimous? I don't remember. And yeah, and then you either get into Sunday company or you don't. And I didn't get in. And it was this... uh, I was shocked honestly because for so long me too honestly for so long every single person around me was like well you know when you're in sunday company they're like without a doubt and have always said very complimentary Ugh. things about like my comedy and i just was i was so convinced for so long that that was my path i was like well this is how this is all going to go down i'm going to get into sunday company i'm going to do sunday company i'm going to either get my agent there or uh maybe get an audition for snl or whatever and like this is going to be my path this is my path and then when that got like cut off, I was like, Oh, I don't know what to do with my hands. Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? I don't understand. I just didn't understand. And then I and I was really hurt. Uh but like, but not in like a fuck groundlings kind of way, because a lot of people are that way. And I still I learned so much there. I met all of my favorite people because of the groundlings like almost Mm. all and i learned a lot and i I loved the program and if i had gotten in i would still be i mean it is culty of course uh and i would still be fully involved in the cult of it i although in hindsight i am glad i didn't get in because i don't know how a parent can do sunday company Mm. i mean writing lab was truly uh, exhausting i quit my job I was a personal assistant and I quit because I was like, Whoa. oh, I can't have a job. I need, we need to financially figure out a way for me to not work for three months because I cannot do it Wow. Um, and take care of my I believe it. and take this class. It just was impossible because I didn't sleep and I ended up getting COVID and I got really sick and I just was like, my Damn. body is like not responding to this very well. So I... Uh, and then I, and then, and then I didn't get in and I was like, Oh my God, I've like sacrificed so much for this. Mm. And they record the shows and, um, I didn't watch it for so long. And, and uh, honestly, I'm not just saying this, the whole class was so fucking talented that I was like, Oh, your class was like killers. It, like probably the best class I've it ever was seen. Insane. It was insane. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't know what's going to happen. Cause there's only allowed to be 16 people in Sunday company at a time. And there was already like, tw- there was 16 people while we were in and they were only going to get rid of three. Cause there's three seniors. Like three, cause you can only do Sunday company, three, six month sections. Mm. Um, and after, so you're like a freshman, then you're a junior and then you're a senior. And after Mm. senior six, you either get invited into the main company or you're done. And there was only three seniors and there was like all of us. And I was like, well, I don't know how this is going to work because I think maybe like eight or nine people are going to pass into Sunday company. I mean, I was convinced because everybody was so good. 
And then on the day of the phone calls, uh, people, we were in a group text and we decided on emojis to send on like whether or not you got in or it was like a dolphin and a fire emoji or something. And the dolphin was like, I didn't get in. And so many people were sending dolphins. And I was like, oh, this person didn't get in? Uh-oh. Uh, I'm feeling mm. a lot less confident. Mm. And I didn't watch the tape for a very long time. It was, like, very triggering. And then one day I sat down and I watched my sketches. And I was like, oh, you know what? If I was in the main company, I wouldn't pass me either. I don't think it was my best. Mm. It wasn't my best. Like, Good for you. There's power in what you just yeah, said. Yeah, and it was really hard to admit that, but I was like, I think I feel better about this. Like, they, wow, good for you, man. I have done way better shows than that. I've written better stuff. Mm. I've performed better. Like, And that's not my path. And I think it was like very healing for me to watch that. And... There's other people who I watched in that show on the tape that I was like, oh, I still don't know why this person didn't pass. This person should have passed based on this. It's Mm. so funny. But yeah, I, it was very, um, good. I mean, hanging out with my friends, I was like, yeah, I think like, that's just not the way it's going to work out. Um, I think this is my path, which is like writing with my friends. Mm. And one of my friends who had gotten into Sunday company, he is in every single national commercial on television constantly working and he was in sunday company and then eventually got like was was done with it and i told him i didn't pass and he was like honestly i'm so glad he's like i'm so glad you didn't pass he's like that place and this is his perspective he's like that place can tries to conform you into their style and he's like and you're better than that uh he's like i don't i I don't want that for you anyway he's like you you should just be writing your own stuff and like you know, I am not here to like sit around and talk shit about the growlings. I do still love it. But like, yeah, Mm -hmm. I don't, I think like the sketches that I pitched and that I wrote got so whittled down to something that I wasn't proud of in the, in, in the tape Mm -hmm. and, and my own performance as well. It's not like anybody else's fault. I mean, you have someone like Lisa who in that show was like every single thing she pitched was like, no notes. This is perfect up on stage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because that's just like in her. And yeah, I think uh, that just wasn't going to be the path. And I write better I re- with my friends unobstructed. Mm. Yeah, now that makes a lot of sense, especially with the improv background. Like, And you, I think you recommended an SNL book that I want to bring up because this really relates especially to like Lisa and all that. Mm-hmm. But improv so good because your directability increases like yeah. the short form game new choice that's like a new direction like you just take it right and i remember <clears throat> i think it's like the 40 year snl book where it's like all the stories of the writers live from new york and the perform- is what it's called yeah it's amazing and i believe you're the one who told me about it yeah. but there's this one producer writer who's been around for decades and he's like your success on snl depends on like there's a circle that's your comedy. Then there's a circle that's SNL's brand. And how much do they overlap? Yeah. And he was like, the two biggest overlappers in my history were Kristen Wiig and Will Ferrell. And he's like, we had amazing comedians, but they didn't overlap. Yeah. And so if they didn't overlap, like they wouldn't conform well to SNL. And so they couldn't stay here. And so that's what it reminds me of. It's like, yeah, Groundlings was amazing for what it was. Totally. But now on to the next. Yeah. I learned I I learned a lot from it. And I'm yeah. I feel very lucky that I had the experience that I did. And like I went to the show, I went to the Sunday Company show last week with the people that yeah. were in my class. Yeah. And it was like really tough. Cause I was like, yeah. man, uh, I could have been up there. And I'm like, yeah, I think that's okay. I think this is okay. Like being out of it is also very nice because I I've taken it off the pedestal, the, mm. the school in general. Like I think it's still incredible, but I'm like, oh, I don't think I, I think I'm okay. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. I'm so happy. I know 
I'm probably projecting because I have a few friends with this experience and like other people who've said many, many things. Like we said, every school's got its right. things, but I've heard Sunday Company is super political in this election process. But um, from people, other people, not you. But, yeah, yeah. So I imagine it was going to be rigorous work no matter what. And, I just uh, don't, well, I wouldn't gl- have been able to work. Mm. I wouldn't have been able to have, I don't know how we would have like survived if I would have gotten into Sunday Company. You have no fucking life. Oh, it's the same schedule man. as SNL. Like you're, I mean, not exactly the same, but I mean, you're writing constantly. It's, I've heard it's close. It's like in a sense prepping you right. for that, right? But without the pay. <laughs> in fact, you're paying. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, well, all right, my friend, I'm going to cut yeah, yeah. you loose because you've done amazing amount of time here. I really appreciate all your Thank time. You so I'm going to just stop the record and, uh, and then we'll chat for a Love second that. and then we'll be done. All right, I'm stopping it.